Recent PISA math scores paint a picture of declining math achievement in Ontario students, and the decline isn't new. Student scores have been steadily declining over the past decade. Joining us now to tell us how she intends to deal with the drop, here's Liz Sandals. She's Ontario's Minister of Education and the MPP for Guelph, and welcome back to TVO. It's great to be here. I know you know these numbers, but in case our viewers haven't seen them, I'm going to share them with them, and then we'll come back and chat okay. and see what you intend to do about this. Here's how we fare on the international stage. Let's put these up. Canada dropped six spots from 2006. We are now apparently 13th out of the 65 jurisdictions that were tested in math. Shanghai, China, Quebec, Finland, Canada. There's Ontario down the list and the United States. And then we want to check at the decline of provincial math skills actually over the past almost a decade. And if we do that, you will see Alberta, Quebec, Canada, and then Ontario, Manitoba, and PEI. And our numbers from the left column to the right column are going in the wrong direction. So, first question, what's your reaction to all of that? Um, I've, I've got two reactions, actually. So first reaction is, uh, it's actually consistent with our EQAO scores. It's consistent with what has happened all across the country. Because, in fact, all of those provinces that you, you've shown and the ones you haven't, there has been a little bit of a decline in all of the scores. Um, the other thing is, though, and, and we need to do something about it, okay? So we, we need to think about how do we get better. The other thing we need to uh, look at, though, is if you look at the decline, it's 14 points on a scale. If you notice the top score when you were showing uh, the results, it's a scale that goes up over way over 600. So it's on the order of about 2%. Two and a half percent. But if it was two percent in the right direction, you'd be crowing about that. So if it, I would right? obviously be happier yeah. if it was in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It's definitely in the wrong direction. But I, I'm a bit concerned that we look at some of the coverage, and your 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 statement about steady decline. In fact, when we look at our local Ontario EQAO scores, what we see is if you went back a decade, the scores were here. They went up to here they came back to here. So that in fact, over the decade, there's actually been an increase. But I see John Manley, the CEO and president of the Canadian Council of Chief Executives, who sees these results and he calls them, quote, a national emergency. And I think he's overreacted slightly. I think what we have is a national challenge to make sure that we do better in math. So absolutely, we need to do better in math, uh, but it isn't a national crisis. We, we still see that if you look at uh, Ontario in particular, or all of Canada, but we're, you know, I'm responsible for Ontario. Let's talk about Ontario. Mm -hmm. Ontario is still ahead of the OECD in everything that was tested. Math, uh, reading, science, we're ahead of the rest of the world in terms of the average. And if you look in particular, something you didn't put up there, is if you looked at the computer-based math testing, Ontario actually did better than a whole lot of other countries. And computer-based math testing should, that's different from they, the regular. Yeah, it, it, they actually ask the kids different questions. They ask the kids que the sorts of questions that you might, uh, problems you might be solving on a computer as opposed to, you know, with an old, fashioned uh, pa paper and pencil. And it was interesting that Ontario kids actually did better on that section of the math test. And it was interesting because we've been doing uh, consultations about the future of education in Ontario. And everybody says one of the things that comes up is we have to teach kids how to use technology well. So it was interesting that when you were using technology while you were attacking a problem, they are actually better. starting to do that. Well, so there's some good signs. Okay, I hear you, but, but let me just put this to you yeah. and then you tell me if I'm full of it or what. Your government got elected 10 years ago, mostly I would suggest on a promise of repairing what you perceived as damage done to the education and healthcare systems by the previous conservative government. And after 10 years of liberals, don't you need to show the Ontario public unambiguously good news on this file, or else your whole reason for existence, your whole reason for victory in some respects, doesn't make sense anymore. 
Well, and I think the unambiguous good news is if you look at the graduation rate, when we came, and this is a really tough measure of graduation, because what we're doing is we're taking a cohort that enters in grade, grade nine, we're following those exact kids, and we're asking how many have graduated in four or five years. When we did that when we first arrived, the answer was 68% of Ontario students were graduating. The answer high is school. now, from high school. The answer is now 83% of Ontario students are graduating from high school. Once again, are we going to make it better? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's the unambiguous good news. Uh, you know what? Your critics that, would say it's not unambiguously good news because they would say you've lowered some of the standards in order to allow that to happen. Do you know something? Tell me. The Auditor General looked at the EQAO testing mm -hmm. with the view that the critics say that we l relax the standard. The Auditor General looked at the testing and said, do you know what, there's no evidence that that's true. So critics will say anything. That's not right. I think the fact that we've had students staying around in high school longer and graduating is great news. But let's go back to math, mm -hmm. because I really do think that we need to do some things. And we've been looking at this very seriously. So we actually are looking at why is it that Quebec does better than Ontario? What's different in some of the other jurisdictions? One of the things that's interesting is some of the Asian countries, which actually weren't in the original testing 10 years ago, because they're not members of the OECD, uh, who are now in the PISA testing. And we looked at what do they do differently, and we found out, well, one of the things that they do differently is actually that the parents spend truckloads of money on having every kid go to private tutoring or group tutoring every night after school and on weekends. So I don't think that's something I'm going to try We're and sell to Ontario parents. No. I don't think that's, that's true. I think what we, we do need to do with Ontario parents is give, uh, is give parents a better indication what is going on in math class, mm -hmm. and how can you help your kid with what's going on in math class. But we can do some things better, too. I'm going to get into those, okay. but I first want to, I don't know if you saw Conrad Yakubuski's call. I think he's actually the brother of the conservative MPP who gives you guys such hell across the floor all the time. John from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. But anyway, here's what um, Conrad had to write in the Globe and Mail earlier this month. He said, the decade-long drop in math scores among students outside Quebec corresponds with the spread of, quote, discovery learning in the classroom. The idea that students must be free to solve problems based on their unique learning styles popped up in the education literature in the late 1960s and went mainstream in the 1990s. But there was a huge revolt when U.S. parents discovered Johnny couldn't multiply. The pendulum has since swung back to teaching the basics. Yet most English Canadian school boards embraced some version of discovery learning, even after it was being questioned south of the border. It fit with the equity mantra that permeated the jargon of education bureaucrats and ministers. Reaching every student became the theme of education policies aimed at bringing up the bottom with student-centered learning. Do you think these results tell us something about so-called discovery learning? I think what they may tell us a bit is that uh, we need to make sure that, that what's going on in classrooms is actually what the curriculum documents say. Because what the curriculum documents say is it's important both to have students understand mathematical operations and how you arrive at the answer and why you arrive at the answer. Because if you're going to ultimately carry on going forward in math through high school, possibly post-secondary, you need to understand. Yeah. Rote learning isn't sufficient. But there are some things what we would call automaticity big word, mm. is that kids actually do need to recall the basics automatically. Your times tables so have to be you, automatic. Exactly. Yep. Your timetables have to be automatic. And I used to drill my kids. My, my daughter says, you know, you walked into the laundry room to ask mommy if there was a clean t-shirt, and she'd say, six times seven. So, you know, I, I, I believe that kids need to know things automatically. Sometimes uh, that's actually where we can get parents to help is it's okay to drill your kids on math facts. So we do need to have an understanding that we need that balance there. But the other thing, though, that people are observing is it's important that, first of all, the child understand 
how you get the answer, why you get the answer, and then by all means go and drill them on making sure they know the answer. But do we need more but drilling in our schools? Of all, first of all, make sure they understand. Because if they don't understand it, when you go on to fractions and percentage oh, yeah. no, and that. algebra and all those other but things. Do we need more back to basics and more rote in our schools? I, th I think that that's, that's actually a fairly easy problem to solve. And I think that there are cases where we've lost that. Yes, you do need the automaticity. You do need some, you need the basics facts. So I agree with that. You need the basics facts. We need to make sure that teachers understand that. I think the other thing we look at when we look at Quebec, which is the the sort of Canadian comparator because they're obviously doing the best, is that when we look at teacher preparation, we also find that Quebec has a more thorough teacher preparation program, particularly with respect to math in the elementary years. So do you plan to do something about that We've here? actually, well, we'd already announced that we were going from a one-year teacher education program to a two-year mm -hmm. teacher education program, and that what that offers is an opportunity for us to actually work more with teacher candidates to make sure that they actually do have a more thorough understanding of how to teach math. I got and, some here I got yes. to read to you okay. on that very subject, because this was in the National Post earlier this month on this issue of teachers. The other issue lies with who is teaching this new discovery math, particularly at the primary level. The majority of new grads coming out of teachers college who intend to work in the primary school system come from humanities backgrounds. And many haven't taken a formal math class since grade 11. Many are rusty on the concepts or uncomfortable with the subject. As a professor at the University of Toronto's Ontario Institute for the Studies in Education told a local paper, Professor Mary Reed said that many student teachers were anxious when given a grade six math test and some struggled to remember basic mathematical concepts. You've got to do something about this, don't and you? And that's exactly why it's important that both that we improve teacher education and also that we improve some of the professional development with, that we do with the teachers that are already in the classroom. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at, for example, is do you need somebody who's a math specialist? Not in the sense that they took math at university. They don't have to be, you don't have to be able to do calculus mm -hmm. to teach grade three math. But uh, people who are uh, specialists in teaching elementary math, maybe we should have people like that in every elementary school so that they can uh, support the, the math program in each elementary school. Are you school. talking about a unionized teacher or somebody who would assist a, a unionized oh, teacher? Oh, no, no. Our teachers, teachers, themselves. Our teachers can do that. Got it. Like, I have great faith that with, with, uh, with professional development and support in how do you teach bat math better? We have all kinds of people in the field out there who are perfectly capable of doing it. We just need to provide more support in how do you do it. And once we've got some of those leaders, making sure that we have math leaders in each school. So those are the sorts of things uh, that we're looking about. Canadian adults are interesting too, though. It's, it, and, and there was a, a pr some previous pizza uh, testing that was on adults that sort of confirmed this. Do you, you know what? The kids come above the OECD standard. The adults are below the OECD standards when you look at adults on math. So you tell me I got to go back to school for I don't think math. you have to go back to school, but we have to be conscious that as adults, we have much different attitudes toward literacy and numeracy. Mm. If you're an adult who doesn't know how to read, or read comfortably. You will go to great lengths to hide that from your children, yeah. your grandchildren, your employer, because we accept universally literacy matters. We don't treat numeracy like that. We actually, it's sort of, oh, I couldn't do math either. Of course, Johnny can't do math. Tends to be the uh, attitude we so get we from get rid adults. Of that attitude. We need to get rid of the attitude that it's okay, that you know Johnny can't do math because I didn't do math. No. Johnny can do math. We just have to do, make, do a better job of making sure Johnny's doing math. The PISA system for scoring mm -hmm. how well we're doing, do you have faith that that's actually a, a sound way to measure these things? Well, the, it, it's, if nothing else, it's confusing. Uh, because you seem to have this scale that goes on endlessly upwards. Um, and it is a confusing system, so I think, uh, which is why I pointed out that 
because I've seen a lot of media reports that said, oh, it's dropped 14 points. Well, people think that means it dropped 14 percentage points. No, it's on a scale that just goes on endlessly mm-hmm. off into the ether. It amounts to about two percentage points. So I think, it's, I think the thing about some of the work they do is it's hard to explain. Hmm. Here's Diane Ravitch, who uh, is a research prof of education at New York University. And she's got a blog, and she writes this on her blog about this. We measure only what can be measured. We measure whether students can pick the right answer to a test question, but what we cannot measure matters more. The scores tell us nothing about students' imagination, their drive, their ability to ask good questions, their insight, their inventiveness, their creativity. Let others have the higher test scores. I prefer to bet on the creative, can-do spirit of the American people, on its character, persistence, ambition, hard work, and big dreams, none of which are ever measured or can be measured by standardized tests like PISA. Is she onto something? In, well, she is. Interestingly, the uh, York Region Board had a, uh, had a Quest conference, it was called, uh, uh, several weeks ago, and they had leaders from all over the world in elementary and secondary education. And I was chatting with the... Uh, the minister who was responsible for education from Singapore. And he was here to figure out what we're doing because while they're at the top of the heap on the PISA tests in terms of the automaticity sorts of skills, um, we're actually doing really well on some of the more creative problem solving. And again, I mentioned earlier we're doing some consultations on the future of Ontario education. What we hear from business leaders is we want people who are creative thinkers. goes to the article you just read there. It's hard to measure, though. Yeah, it's hard to measure. Creative thinkers, collaborators, communicators. Uh, We want people who actually know how to put into practice. The students said, if you're going to teach me curriculum, I want to know why it matters. We actually have to show students the relevance of math. How are you going to use that in the future? If you're going to be a sociologist, you actually need to know math because you need to be able to look at the data from all those socioeconomic studies. I get it, but you're, you're a politician, yeah. and as a politician, you've got to be accountable, first and yes. foremost, probably here to parents. And the first thing parents look at is, is Johnny or Janie's report card in good shape? Is it going in the right direction? Are the EQAO scores going in the right direction? Are these PISA scores going in the right direction? And if they're not, you've got a problem, don't you? Politically. I'm not sure that it's a political problem. And I I think what we've got is we've got a challenge and we will solve it because we've got boards all over the province who have been working with the ministry uh, once we got the EQAO scores and have been looking at how do we do a better job of teaching math. So I'm actually really excited that we've got an opportunity to, uh, to take our math program and have a whole lot more people in, engaged in how do we do math and how do we do math well. Okay, we've got a minute left here and I want to ask you one last thing, which is I know education is a provincial responsibility according to our constitution, but is there a national solution here to what clearly is a problem that goes beyond the borders of the province of Ontario? Well, under the structure we have, which is provincial, uh, the ministers of, uh, of education do meet uh, physically once a year and more frequently by good old uh, phone technology. Um, and it, this is one of our top concerns is how do we collectively address math. When we met in the uh, summer, it was one of the top two agenda items amongst all of us is how do we collectively look at who's you know borrowing strategies from each other in terms of what's succeeding what isn't so successful how do we all improve our approach to math okay liz sandals it's good of you to come into tvo tonight thanks a lot thank you so much it's great to be here that's ontario's education minister liz sandals the mpp for guelph support ontario's public television donate at tvo.org